Hey guys, you're watching Geek with Dev. This is another exclusive interview. Today I'm joined by Jonathan Davis, aka JD from Outer Banks. You know him, he plays Pope. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me. I this is completely um, just spur of the moment. Uh, we I shot JD a message and we we decided to go live on Instagram. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. You, you get asked a lot about how you got the role of um, Pope, but just for our viewers, do you, you want to give like a little quick recap for those who don't know? Oh uh, yeah, sure. So before I was um, I was casting out of banks. I was working as a shoe salesman in uh, Saks Off Fifth Avenue, still acting, going to classes, you know, pursuing that dream. But um, I got the audition around like early February. And um, I, I came in, I, I did the first, the first, the, the scenes they had me audition with were like a scene where I was talking to Kiara on the boat um, about, um, I guess, you know, giving the earth more than 1%. And, um, you know, uh, the scene with JJ after his dad. So um, those were the scenes I auditioned with. And um, I get a call maybe about two weeks later, like, hey, we liked your first audition. We'd like for you to come back, um, meet with um, one of the producers and um, do, do like just basically do another read. And um, I came in, I did a second read. I felt really, really strongly about that one. And then they asked me to come in and do another read. They gave me the first four episodes of the show, um, a whole monologue, maybe like a two page monologue and um, another scene. For me to pick, I had to go through the first four episodes and pick a scene for myself to do. And um, I went through, I picked a scene, I went in again, I read it, I auditioned for it, you know. And then um, I get another call like, hey, they want you to come in for a chemistry read. And um, so I go in for this chemistry read with uh, Rudy, who was at the time playing John B. And oh, really? mm -hmm, yeah, Rudy was, Rudy was originally auditioning for John B. And, um, uh, and two other um two other people who they had in mind for jj for jj and kiara and um i do the chemistry read feel real strong about it and i get a call maybe about a week or two later from my manager like hey they want to book you for the part of pope and they're going to be flying you to charleston in a couple days so um yeah that was yeah. just a great experience you know i remember i remember when i got the part i like um my dad and i had this thing like we we, we had this thing where we're like okay we're gonna play this one song if, if I get the part, and it was um, "Juicy" by by Notorious. And um, I remember he came in the house, and he like, he had no idea I got it, and I and I played the song, and we just kind of celebrated, you know, cried, hugged. It was that's it was awesome. a great moment. That's wicked, man. Is there a question, honestly, that you have not been asked about OBX? Is there a story you have that you that you haven't gotten to tell yet? Maybe the story of how Chase and Austin kind of became went from beefing to became becoming friends and it was like the beef and when i say beef the beef lasted for like a minute and a half because you know when austin got cast chase was like i'm not gonna like this guy on purpose he, he was like he was trying to get in, it was a character thing in the character a, yeah more than a personal thing and and then i was like all right but then i met austin i was like oh no this dude's super chill and um we went to the movie theater and we went to go see avengers endgame and um austin was like i'm gonna use the bathroom real quick and so we're like me, Rudy and Chase are standing there and he goes to the bathroom and Rudy's like, and Chase dead serious is like, should we leave him? And we were like, no, <laughs> what are you talking? Like he legit was about to leave him like, like, like we were just going to walk out on him. And I, was, I asked Austin, I'm like, what would you have done if like, we'd have just like left you there? He's like, I've probably been really upset. <laughs> like, like, all right. Really? Like, it's like, I guess keep it professional, no friendship. But then like, so what happened was like, he came over, like he got the, he, he moved into the same apartment complex we did off of my rec, I was like, hey, you should move into this apartment complex. He was like, bet. And um, he came, we, we were over, we were all over at Chase, Matt, Chase and, Chase and Matt, Chase and Rudy's. And, but I say that because Maddie was there, other Maddie was there. And Kevin, who was our set PA, who was like the, 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 the like actors PA was there. And um, we all just kind of hung out, watched the fight, the UFC fight and was like, this dude's really chill. Like Chase is like, Chase, Chase even apologizes like, Austin, I'm sorry. You're super chill. And I was trying to be upset at you. Yeah, I mean like some some people like really try to get into character like to the point where in their real lives they are um, 
being the character. Like, I know Jim Carrey, Johnny Depp has done stuff like that, but it's good that you guys all came together and kind of um, just became such a, like a, like a family. And it's cliche, it's cliche, but uh, you guys became a set family. And I was wondering, did you ever like go out and not necessarily get dinner or have a, have a set party, but did you ever like go out and explore, get out of your apartments and go? Um, together we would we would find new restaurants go out like and it, it was especially fun because nobody knew who we were so yeah. we could just like walk go wherever do wherever do whatever go to some concerts like we we live right next to like a little uh an area where they held concerts so we we saw a couple of we saw a concert or two went to some like live shows you know got to really experience the culture of charleston and um eat, like especially like like there's i'm sure there's tons of pictures and videos of us like eating food at different places we had our we had our regular spots. Um, Taco Boy was one of those spots that we 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 frequent we frequented occasionally. And if it was and and the weird thing the thing about Charleston though is like, and, and we're not used to this because we we live in LA. Everything closes at like nine o'clock. So like if it's nine o'clock, you're not going anywhere. And sometimes we wouldn't stop filming until like eleven. So like there'd be no food anywhere, <laughs> and you'd be like you'd have to like you have to keep your your like fridge stocked. Because you can't, like, there's no, like, going, like, the, McDon the McDonald's out there even closes at, like, midnight. So there's really? no, like, yeah, so there's no going to, like, any food place past, like, nine. Right. So who's the best chef, though? Probably me. Probably you. Right on. So you were keeping everybody fed after nine o'clock? Well, Drew, Drew, you know what? I'd say, like, everybody, everybody, um, by that time, we were so tired, we just went to sleep. Like, like yeah, we would come up, honestly. all right, run, go straight to sleep. But um, but we all cooked for each other. Like everybody's cooked for each other at one point. Chase cooked burgers for us. Drew and I cooked steaks. I cooked fried chicken and like a bunch of other sides. Um, you know we and Bailey's cooked for us. Bailey's dad cooked for us. We've all we've all like, kind of like cooked for each other at some point. Of course, you know that's 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 it. So um, this is a little bit of a topical discussion, and I just wanted to hear your your input on why you guys actually shot in South Carolina because I felt I, I was really inspired by that. Yeah. So we, um, so like for those of you, who know, we, we, we shot in South Carolina because there is um, a bathroom law out there that it's against transgenders. And, um, and as a production, as a company at Netflix, we all decided like, that is not okay. Um, you know, we, we don't, we're not one to like single out, um, any sort of group minority, anything, you know, like, like we we support all sexualities all ethnicities and um we 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 knew like this is something we were going to take a stand on as a cast and as a as a crew and um don't nobody wanted to shoot in the outer banks of north carolina more than jonas pate so um you know but he he decided that the right thing to do was to in fact move it move the production to south carolina and um and you know, we we all believe that taking a stand on something like that is very important, and we we're very happy that you know with with how Charleston accepted us and and we got a little bit of hate from when the trailer came out, especially of like people from North Carolina from the Outer Banks who were like, "That's not shot there," but you know, we we believe in we believe in rights before you know going out and shooting something. That's that's way more important that everybody. Yeah who is on our crew and on our cast, who identifies as, who may identify as transgender, feels included and doesn't feel like we don't care about how they, how they, how they feel about certain laws and certain, and certain things that are, are made in order to, to, to segregate them, you know? Yeah, that's, you know, that's beautiful. I honestly think that that's just beautiful. There's like no other word for it. Like, it's, it's amazing that you guys took a stand for that. And, um, you know, when you, when you think of the cast and this show and, it just kind of gives you like that vibe of I, maybe it's just me, but like I get like a sixties vibe. Like these, these friends are, are like all chilling and like, just peace and love, bro. Like, and I think that the fact that you guys filmed in South Carolina speaks uh, to the show as well. And, and just how you guys are, you know, just like taking a stand for something like that. It's like something your characters would do. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, these are, these aren't characters who, who would, who would who would feel any 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 sort of way about that you know who would who would who would take a stand against against something like that oppression you know against the one percent against 
against all that, you know? And, um, and that, that same 60s vibe, you know, it goes along with like, I think it's like, I think I've heard a lot of like, you know, it doesn't feel like a modern show. It feels like something that would have come out in like thousands or like the nineties. And I'm like, oh, well, that's because there are no cell phones. You know, I, I get a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of problems could have been solved with the cell phone, but I'm like, to that point, you know, we wouldn't have a show. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, it, it puts it in, it's like, it puts it in a timeless kind of feel. It doesn't really feel like any specific time because of that. And I, and I think it's in its, it's in its own world and it gets to be something it's, it gets to be that it doesn't, it doesn't have to fall into like, all right, well now we got to worry about, they have to worry about social media because of this, you know, like they mention it. Like there's plenty of mentionings of like, I can't check this. Let me check this on my, on my social media. But like, it's not a big part, you know, like you feel like they can survive without it. You know, so it really- doesn't, it's not driving the plot. If that makes any sense. A lack of social media doesn't drive the plot. It's just like something you like, Oh, Hey, these kids are never on their phone. You like, you don't realize it until you finish it. And you go back and you look like, did, did I ever see any of the Poves use a cell phone? And like I think once in the beginning. That's, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. There's so many, so many different aspects to the show that make it unique. And honestly, shout out to Jonas and like the, the assistant directors and directors for like making it the show that it is honestly, bro. And like, it's, I just, it fascinates me. It's like it's our baby for sure. Like it's our, um, it's our child. It's our, it's our, all our visions, especially the visions of the writer, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon. Burke, Josh Pate, um, Jonas Pate, all kind of coming together. And, and shout out to our, um, our guest directors, Val, Valerie Wise and, um, and Cherie, who came in and, and directed episodes, Cherie directed episodes three and four, and, and Val directed episodes seven and eight, and they did an amazing, fantastic job. Right on, man. Do you think you could say that this was the best summer of your life? Oh, for sure. It's definitely up there. Like it's, you know, it probably is for sure. It's probably the best summer of my life in terms of like, not only was I getting to like live my dream that I've been dreaming about since I was 10 years old of being an actor, but I could do it with people that I really genuinely care about. Um, for uh, people who I consider my lifelong friends. Um, it's on a project like Outer Banks where it's like, you get to just have fun in the summer, push your, like be active, push your, push your limits, you know? Um, be out in a place like beautiful Charleston where there are beaches. Kind of, it's like, it reminds me of like, of my, like of where I grew up, except more beachy. Um, and, and just like, you know, like now that people like, now that it's out and people can see it, it's like seeing the response from it. This lets me know that like that fun I had, I can like, it's, it's people can enjoy it too. You know, people can like live a surrogate summer through our summer you know, the best summer I've ever had in my life, people, I've gotten like DMs and like messages saying, people telling me like, hey, like, you know, I'm, I've been stuck in quarantine, but your show, the show lets me feel like I'm, I'm back out there in summer. And that, and that's just like, that's honestly what you do it for. You act so people can feel. And, and, and if people are feeling, then you're doing something right. And I just want to say thank you to like everybody who's watched it and, and been able to feel stuff from the show. Like you guys are the reason we do it. And on that note, thanking everybody, I want to do something special for you and for other people who enjoy the show. Um, I'm going to put out the information for this right on Instagram right now. Let's see. We're going to get a bunch of people in here to just kind of say, hey, before you're on your way. And then we'll catch you live on, on OBX, right? Yep. On, F- on Netflix streaming, if you haven't checked it out, please do. It's... um. It's our, it's our passion project. It's our baby, you know, and, and it's a fun ride. Hey, everybody. Yo, okay. what the? Hi. What's up? What's up?